Good morning. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Lander. If we have any first-time visitors, we'd like you to fill out a visitor card that's located in the back of the pews or on the two tables in back of the last pew. And you could turn those in at the offering plate if you would. Uh, we'd like to also welcome all of our online viewers from around, uh, I guess, around the world. Our weekly announcements uh, after service today at 11 o'clock, the social committee will be meeting. And uh, Tuesday, uh, there's been a change. There's no Fred, so there's no Bible study. So no Bible study on Tuesday. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, the Oxbow is men's breakfast, and I'll be doing the devotions. And Saturday at 10 o'clock is card ministry. And next Sunday at 9 o'clock is Sunday school. 10 o'clock is worship and communion. And at 11 o'clock, the deacon's picnic. And the sign-up sheet to help with picnic items for deacon's picnic is on the board by the back door. This is a great time, so please join us. And that's back there by that door in the back. Our music leaders today, we welcome Gwen Strohback. She's been gone for a few weeks, and Don McComey will be leading the singing. And also, uh, I should announce uh, the prayer chain and the bulletins. You need to contact Kathy Hansen, and she has her email address there if you'd like to contact her. Birthdays this week, Jim Moore on the 4th and Alex Englehart on the 6th. Shoebox, let's start collecting supplies, pencils, pens, small crayons, or small tablets. Crayons, markers, scissors, and pencil sharpeners will be great. Ah, I'm like getting back to almost school time. Final camps for Wyoba. Work week is August 22nd to the 26th, and the women's retreat is August 26th to 28th. And our nice quilt here, the quilt raffle, there's only one Sunday left to buy your tickets for the beautiful handmade quilt donated by Dorothy Phelps. The money will help the social committee with their events. Please buy some tickets for $5 each. And you can purchase the tickets from Arlene, Annette, and Kathy. And the drawing will be next Sunday at the Deacon's Picnic. And the Christian School Elevation Academy plans to open this fall as a middle school, grades six through eight with around 12 students. Uh, I'd like to also remind you that uh, the little booklets in the back, they're to take if you would like to take them home. You don't have to bring them back. Anyone else have any announcements? Okay, enjoy your service. All right, good morning. Our first hymn today will be hymn number 198, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Please stand if you wish. <clears throat> Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burdens, setting my spirit free, for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful, the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than a mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient great for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. One Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. 
chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most defiled. By its transforming power, making him God's dear child. Purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. No frogs this morning, brother. Man, that was impressive. Good morning, church. It's good to see you guys. Out of Hebrews 4, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. All right, our next uh, number will be Give Me That Old Time Religion. It's a medley that uh, Glenn's been working on where the words will be on the PowerPoint up there, okay? You'll know most of the tunes, I think. Give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, it's good enough for me. Me love everybody, make me love everybody, make me love everybody, and it's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, it's good enough for me. It's me, it is me, it is me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It is me, it is me, it is me, oh Lord, standing in the time of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, it's good enough for me. Lay on my burden down the riverside, down by the riverside. Down by the riverside, gonna lay down my burdens. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside. 
I ain't going to study war no more. I ain't going to study war no more. Study more no more. I ain't going to study war no more. I ain't going to study war no more. Study war no more. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look me on the blue. Glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burdens down. Gonna walk and talk with Jesus when I lay my burdens down. Gonna walk and talk with Jesus when I lay my burdens down. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Okay. And then we'll be singing Be Thou My Vision on B page 382. <coughs> Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I never with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou art. Thy King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven sun. Art of my own heart, whatever befall. Still be my vision, O ruler of all. Amen. Thank you, guys. Back of the bulletin, 1 John 14 through 15. And we are sure of this, that he will listen to us whenever we ask him for anything in line with his will. And if we really know he is listening when we talk to him and make our requests, then we can be sure he will answer us. God is faithful. I don't think many of us would have showed up this morning if we didn't still believe that. And uh, isn't it true that whether you're at the top of the mountain or you're down in a valley, spiritually speaking, and we'll, as Christians, experience all of the above, that God is faithful. And you can, in those low times, you can look back and say, I've seen enough to know that God is with me. He's answered these specific prayers, and he's going to be with me through this life, right up until the moment I step into eternity. He tells us here to pray. So let's 
bow our heads together and pray. God in heaven, we worship you this morning. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you have created each one of us in your image to worship you, to know you and make you known throughout this world and to delight in you and enjoy you now and forever. So this morning, Lord, we ask that you would stir our hearts to worship, increase our faith, and let us delight ourselves in you uh, together and as we leave this place apart that uh, we would enjoy you more and more each and every day that we live this side of heaven. And we thank you, Lord, for your grace, for sinners like us, and for this world, and your mercy, and your kindness, your forgiveness. The blood on the cross has worked, and we here testify to that, and we give you thanks this morning. We pray your blessing and your victory on each request on this bulletin, and for every unspoken need here this morning. And we ask, Lord, that you'd be glorified in our midst. May you pour out the sweet oil of gladness into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before the uh, sermon, I'm going to do a, a Bill and Gloria Gaither uh, number called The Old Rugged, Rugged Cross Makes the Difference, or Made the Difference. Can't even read today, so we're in trouble. Okay. All right. <laughs> Twas a life filled with aimless desperation. Without hope walked the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched downward. Just one touch, then a new life began. And the old rugged cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. I will praise him forever and ever, for the cross made the difference for me. Barren walls echoed harshness and anger. Little feet ran in terror to hide. Now those walls ring with love, warmth, and laughter. Since the giver of life moved inside. And the old rugged cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. I will praise him forever and ever, for the cross made the difference for me. There's a room filled with hot ashen faces. Without hope, death has wrapped them in gloom. But at the side of a saint, there's rejoicing for life can't be sealed in a tomb. And the old rugged cross made the difference 
in a life bound for heartache and defeat. I will kiss him forever and ever, for the cross made the difference for me. The cross made the difference for me. Amen. It was a little hard to untrain over here. Uh, solo. Please sing solo, right? But uh, they, we, you could train a few of us old dogs new tricks, I think. But thank you. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Uh, Children's Church, you're free to go. And uh, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the gift of salvation. I'm always amazed to meet other believers and uh, to hear of that moment that they came to faith, that they stepped into the light. And uh, that's what this little break in Galatians is about. Uh, this is the third uh, passage that we're going to look at about the light. Uh, True light, true love, you could title this one if you would have turned it in on time, but I was on the mountain with no cell service. Uh, so we are going to look at Matthew 6, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 uh, through 24, but we may as well look at verse 19. <laughs> you know, to give you the whole context. And, uh, and then we'll pray and see what the Lord has for us this morning. Verse 19, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and, uh, we could say pack rats in Wyoming, that would be a right translation, uh, or vermin, destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now here's the main passage, 22, 3, and 4. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you for your word, for it is truth and life and a lamp unto our feet. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd illuminate our hearts and minds this morning. Heal us. Uh, grant us faith to believe your word this morning. Encourage our hearts. Strengthen us. Lift us up, and we pray for blessing upon blessing, grace upon grace for each other this morning. Hide me behind the cross. Let me preach with your power for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you in the light or in the darkness? Now, what if Congress passed a law? You're going, oh, great, not this. Oh, really? And, you know, it was probably as sane as some of the laws they've passed. And let's, let's say they passed a law that there's too much light pollution, uh, you know, and, and uh, there's, or, or, or there's an issue with people driving during the day, and we need people to only drive at night, and you can't use headlights. Well, some of you say, well, that wouldn't change much of the tourists driving around uh, Lander, or Cody especially. Uh, but that, that wouldn't make much sense, would it? Uh, it'd be chaos, wouldn't it? To only be able to drive at night and not use your headlights. Well, I, I think that's very similar to many laws that are passed. 
in many godless nations uh, where they say, you, you know, for example, we can't teach the word in schools, public schools anymore, which, by the way, that's why they were invented. That's just living life without the light. That's living life without the lamp. And uh, it's the same with uh, recently uh, in the Supreme Court. They were, they were trying to make it illegal uh, for a coach to pray after the games, to give thanks, whether he won or lost. He would get on his knees and he would pray silently in the field. That was his conviction. And thankfully, he won that court case. But it's, it's amazing to me. I remember reading when it was illegal for Daniel to pray, and I thought, how goofy is that? And here we are in America with the same thing. That is passing laws for people to live in darkness, to walk in darkness, to not have the light. Here in verse 22, it says, The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. Actually, that's not what it says. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. That was a, uh, that, what I quoted was a, uh, a verse out of the Psalms. Have you ever been through uh, a terrible storm? I'm looking at some people I've seen on the trail. Uh, what was that, Monday? <laughs> You guys look a lot better. Not that you looked bad, but you did look a little beat. Um, and then after the storm, you come out into the light. The sun warms you up. And, and what does that do for you, your emotions? I was guiding a sheep hunt one time, uh, and, and there was dark clouds and rain and thunder and hail and it was just miserable, and my hunter said, we've got to go back to the tent. I said, there probably ain't a tent to go back to. And um, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you an old trick that my dad taught me, you've got to go higher. He said, higher? You're out of your mind. I hire you as a guide, and this is what I get? I said, yeah, we've got to get above the storm. And as soon as we broke through that upper layer of clouds, guess what there was? Sunshine. And the further we went, the warmer it got, we began to dry off, and you could actually look down on all of the darkness and the clouds, and you could see lightning bolts jumping around, you could hear the thunder, but we were above the storm. And here this passage says, the light is pleasant. It's good for the eyes to see the sun. Truly the light is sweet, and a, pleasing, a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. And I would ask you, spiritually speaking, are we in the dark clouds? Is there a battle raging in our nation for the souls of our children and the souls of the people? Is there darkness in the land? Is there a storm across our nation? And the answer is yes, but the encouragement I have for you this morning is, where do you go in darkness? Go to the light. Where do you go that you're so low that nothing on this earth can comfort you? Nothing can take away the anxieties or the, the griefs or the fears. And I would encourage you today, go to the light. Go up, get above it, go higher. Because Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus is the light of man. He's the light. He's the source of all comfort and hope. And so I ask you this morning, have you been kissed by the Son, the Son of righteousness, the Son of God? Go up the mountain into God's light, into his love. Jesus warms the heart and brings in the sunlight, S-O-N, to our souls. When our gaze is upon him, how great is the light inside of us. It illuminates the whole body. I've seen more light blazing through a dying saint than a young, athletic, worldly sinner in all their splendor and money and the glory of man. And if you have the light, the Bible says your eyes are good. Your whole body will be full of light. You'll be radiant. You'll be all lit up, full of the joy of the Lord, which the Bible says is your strength. 
One thing that has surprised me as a minister, uh, as I've shared with you before, to go into a, uh, a, a, the bedroom of a, a hospital where the, the news is bad and to have some old saint or young saint smiling and say, I'm about to go to glory. I read this morning of 150 years ago it was, a, a minister was walking through a graveyard and he came across a fresh gravestone and burial of a 17-year-old young man, and it said, I'm in eternity, and you will be soon. And the minister stopped in his tracks and thought about that, and thought, here's a 17-year-old already in eternity, and I will be there soon. That was 150 years ago. How much more true is it of us? When Jesus passed through this world, he, he was different than anyone else on planet Earth. And he called people out of darkness and into the light and invited them to this following of him in this what is called the walking in the light. And so this morning I ask you, are you walking in the light? Or, as the scriptures say in this very passage, are you on the highway to hell? And don't start singing that song, please. Even as an unbeliever, I didn't like when they played that song, especially when you're about to ride a bull for hopefully eight seconds. But I, I was like, different song, please. I, can't, I cannot pull the chute on highway to hell. I encourage each one of you to just stop. We're, we're a busy culture. We got a lot going on. And I want to encourage you to taste and see. Stop and taste and see that the Lord is good. The choice is set before all of humanity. In fact, uh, we went on a pack trip this weekend and we were listening to, a, or no, we, we, read a, uh, we read a devotion up there. It was still in Dad's old panniers. And uh, Mom had, you know, probably made him take it. And, uh, and here was this devotion and it was a story of a guy, and I can't pronounce his name right, but basically his name meant uh, hungry coyote. And, uh, and uh, he lived in the 1400s. And he said, and it's, he said he was the mayor of that, one of those big cities that they built all those amazing, uh, uh, not pyramids, but close to it in South America. And he was the leader of, of his people. And he said he outlawed child sacrifice in 1400 with the conviction that he was going to follow the God who painted the sky he decided to walk in as much light as he had. He changed the culture around him with the light he was given. And so the choice is also for you. C.S. Lewis chose Christ and his heart was filled with light. And he said, you can live in the light of heaven and get earth thrown in, or you can live in the darkness of the world and get neither one. The choice is yours. Now Jesus says here in verse 23, but if your eyes are unhealthy or stingy would be maybe a better translation, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, how many of you, I know a few, my age bracket, had baseball cards of Daryl Strawberry? Anybody want to admit to that? I still have some. Are they worth money? I'll sell them to you. And... Um, <laughs> I got, I got Bo, uh, Bo Nose, I got all these uh, wonderful baseball cards, some out in the shed, some in the basement, but I have a lot of Daryl Strawberry. He was a great baseball player, he was famous, but his light was darkness, in his own words. He had multi-million dollar contracts, I mean this guy had money like you wouldn't believe. He could hit home runs with great skill. He dated multiple models. He had worldwide fame. Baseball was his passion. It was his God. It was the light of his eyes. And outside of the spotlight, outside of all of the pictures and the fame, on the inside, he said, was darkness. He found himself full of friends, full of fame, full of money, and full of emptiness and depression set in on his soul. He said fierce anxiety plagued his heart and his mind. He turned to drugs and alcohol. That didn't work, so he tried buying fancy cars and islands of paradise. 
He tried luxurious living and an endless list of things, but he said he was still full of darkness and more empty. What he thought was light was great darkness. What he thought would satisfy stole everything he had. And just before he signed a $50 million contract, his empty vessel sank in a world of loss. It was there that for the first time in his life, he asked Jesus Christ to save him. And he said he received light for the first time in his life. He received peace. And he felt a joy that he had not experienced with all that the world had to offer. And he gave up the baseball career. Now, I thought that was pretty commendable until my friend said, well, yeah, he had enough money to give up. <laughs> but listen, he could have kept going. He could have made more home runs. He gave up his Hollywood contracts and everything else for one thing, to go share the light that he had received, to share the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ saves to the uttermost. He found the true treasure and he went from darkness to light. His eyes went from the gaze upon this world, which behind the veil of false light is empty darkness. And that's why we're told in 1 John chapter 2, do not love the world or anything in the world. And that means love is in fierce commitment. I'm going to pursue everything this world has. That's what that means. He says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. Sitting around the campfire the other day, and I was blessed to hear my son say, I can't wait until eternity and see what this place looks like. All right, that's good. And how do we do this will of God that we see in 1 John chapter 2? I love how simple it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from a wicked, perverse world full of darkness. Saved from your own sin and darkness. And saved from the darkness of Satan and the rulers of the darkness of the air. You must be saved, whoever you are, whoever's listening to me. Your duty and your goal and your choice is darkness or light. Eternity with God forever or lost in outer darkness for all eternity. And then verse 24, no one can serve two masters. You ever try that? It's not easy. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's why you must own your money. Your money must not own you. Some people say, well, money is the root of all evil. That's not true. The love of money, it goes back to that word, and that word love means I'm going to give my whole life towards this thing or this purpose or God. And so, you may have heard uh, that saying, but uh, I want to remind you that it's the love of the material world, the love of creation rather than the creator. That's the difference in what he's saying here. To serve money is to place such a high value on it that we place our faith in it. We put our hope in it and, and trust it for our ultimate security and happiness. Isn't it amazing how many... Uh, uh, multi-millionaires you read of that say, I finally got it all and uh, it didn't satisfy, so I'm giving it all away and I feel better. <laughs> and then we expect that this money uh, will guarantee our future and we desire it more than uh, we desire his righteousness and his kingdom. And this is dangerous for all of us when the love of money dominates our mind, captivates our soul and pushes God off the throne and we worship it rather than him. And I encourage you to watch out for this evil. Money's a, a wonderful tool that God created for all of us to manage and to prosper and to bless uh, others and to be blessed. Money in and of itself is not evil, and, and that's why God, it's one of the things God designed. 
But when we elevate it or anything else to the place of worship, it will destroy you, just like Daryl Strawberry. If you put it above all else in your life, your life is out of balance. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ died to save us from the love of materialism, the love of our own selves above everything else, selfishness, greed. And that's why David teaches us to pray in Psalm 51.10, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David had to pray that. We have to pray that. Look how many things in a given week that will derail your little train of righteousness. And the the wrecking crew has to come in, right? And you go, thank you, Lord, for your grace for sinners like me. Thank you for your grace for impatient people like me. Thank you for your grace for people like me who fail over and over again. The Bible calls this repentance, which simply means, hey, I'm going the wrong way. I'm turning around, going to go the right way. How often do we need to do that? If you find that you've gone down the road of materialism as your chief end goal of life, the Bible says turn around, or any darkness for that matter. If you're you're walking in any darkness, the Bible encourages you Turn around, come to the light, come back to the fountain of life. There's a song that says, are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling you. Come, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He says, leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, it says. Christ is risen. Come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown and go tell the world of the treasure you have found. This treasure is yours for the taking. And it's greater than as many Spanish gold bars as you could ever imagine thrown to your front porch. And God is saying, I'll show you what love is. It's not me laying down my life just just that way, like a soldier would for his country. That's love, that's commitment, that's service. But God says, I'll give you my son. And he'll pay the ultimate penalty for your sin. And he'll die with your sins upon him. And he'll shed his blood to cleanse you of all unrighteousness so that any who would come to him would have the light. Now here's the conclusion of the whole matter to steal King Solomon's words. And remember King Solomon? He had all the wealth he could possibly accumulate. He was the richest man in the world of his day. He had a luxurious lifestyle, all the relationships and pleasure he could possibly have or want. And he did not tell himself no to anything he put his hand to. And you know what he concluded? Meaningless. All of that is total meaningless, valueless. Philippians 3, 7 through 14 says, The prize is Jesus Christ. The treasure is Jesus Christ. The love you've been longing for that sets captives free from sin and shame and guilt and hopelessness is Jesus Christ. He purchased us with his blood. He calls us to rise up and be healed, receive his forgiveness, and experience his eternal love. He calls us to return to him and be safe forever. He reveals to us the reason to live in the light and share his light with a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Jesus is your true light. For you note takers, that's point number one, but we're not going to start the whole sermon now. Boy, that was a sigh of relief. 
Number two, Jesus is your true light. And he has a purpose to provide you with light that leads to true life. And three, Jesus is your true light that makes a promise that he has all power and authority to keep you so rest in him. Bask in the sun of his righteousness. Enjoy his full salvation. And if you have not stepped over from darkness to light, today's the day to do it. Simply receive this by faith. The Bible says you will be saved. Amen. All right, our closing hymn will be on the PowerPoint. It's called The Windows of Heaven. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling today. Oh, there's joy, joy, joy in my heart. For Jesus is everything right. I give up my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And Jesus makes happy the day. We got two different word things on here. And I took the wrong one. And that's why I'm happy today. There we go. Got the right one. You, you want to do it again? We'll do it right. Okay, we'll do it again. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling today. Oh, there's joy, joy, joy in my heart. For Jesus makes everything right. I gave up my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy today. Amen. <laughs> you never know when Donnie gets fired up. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week.